Thank you. I'm glad I got that one piece back in there because he could have been in, in terrible condition, I can tell you that. I never did send him the bill for that. I forgot all about it. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm a great believer in science. A great believer in science. The only way we can really make sense out of the world around us. It takes a lot of effort, a lot of time, it takes a lot of patience. It takes the patience of the people who support science as well. Because a lot of them don't understand what it's all about. They expect miracles and they don't always get miracles. Not right off the bat. Sometimes it takes a little longer. I uh, will tell you that very frequently I get people in the audience during the question and answer period, which we may have a few minutes for now. Um, I get people who say to me, uh, Mr. Randy, can you prove to me that ESP doesn't exist? And I say, no, I certainly can't. They say, aha. Say, Never mind, aha. You say it does? Oh, yes, most certainly. Then you prove it. You're making the claim, not I. I'm not saying it isn't there. You say it is, you prove it. Hey, I got a million dollars for you, if you'd like to prove it. And that usually quietens them down a little, at least. I, I'm going to compare it with the way I often do for my audiences, uh, with trying to prove negatives is, it's not always impossible, but it's usually very difficult. I can't prove to you, for example, that there is not a Barbie doll on the moon. Can you prove to me there is, if you're making the claim? Fine, then you can probably get the million dollars, I would imagine, for that unless one of those guys really pulled a Swifty on it and threw a Barbie doll down there, <laughs> someplace just to cost me a million dollars. I don't know. I often say that it's, um, it's like trying to prove Santa Claus or something like that. Oh, there, there's a good example. Let's, let's work out a little thought experiment here, shall we? Okay, we'll, we'll examine the Santa Claus, what I believe to be a myth. You'll pardon me if I offend you by saying that. I assume it, it is a myth. Um, we can t we'll take one small aspect of it, not the whole thing, of course, it's very complicated. Flying reindeer. Now that we could test, couldn't we? And I presume that we could uh, probably get somebody to fund it somewhere along the line, and I'm not saying we should do this, but we could. Uh, let's get 50 reindeer and uh, take them up on top of the World Trade Center. <laughs> Don't laugh, this is science now, this is serious. And we number them on the side very plainly. And uh, we have a fellow standing there with a big pad of paper and a video camera and, and a recorder. And he's uh, taking down all the details. And I say, OK, what time is it? It's 10 past 10 in the morning, Thursday, so and so. OK, you got that all down? OK. Uh, let me see. Where, number one, where are you here? Number one, OK, here we go. OK, number one, I know you can do it. Ready? OK, push. Um, opposite number one, write down no. <laughs> um, huh, wow. Number two, number two, where are you? Come on, you're hiding. Get in here. Come on out here. Come on out here. Now, he just, he just didn't try. I know you can do it. I know you can do it. Come on. Let's go. Fly. Ooh. <coughs> just use ditto marks. This one didn't work either. If the latter, we have certainly learned something about the IQ of reindeer. <laughs> but we have not shown that there are not eight tiny reindeer at the North Pole who on the evening of December the 25th do and can fly. We haven't proven that, no. It's very highly unlikely that it's true. But proving a negative is not always easy. Now, for years, I closed my lectures and I closed my magic performances like this, and I'll choose this opportunity to do so again. No, Virginia, there isn't anything paranormal out there. Oh, gee, I hate to say that. I wish there were some really supernatural stuff out there. It would be fun, wouldn't it? Something we can't explain at all, but it still happens. It would be fun. It just sort of disturbed me, but uh, hey, I'd, I'd find fun in it too. No, Virginia, there's no Santa Claus. No, Virginia, there's nothing supernatural out there. Now, I can't really say that because I don't know there isn't something out there. For example, now I, I work in Florida, and uh, I get up early at my home before I go off to my office. And by 7 o'clock, usually, I'm sitting at the seat of the computer, and I have a cup of coffee with me to get my heart started that morning. And uh, right outside my little office window there, there's a morning glory vine. And they're wonderful. You know, morning glories close up at night like that, and they open up in the morning, like that. 
Now, I was going, wham, because I've never seen them open up. I don't think anyone ever has. It's marvelous. I try to catch them. I look up at the vine and say, oh, I'm going to get you this morning. You're all puckered up there, or like this. I go to the computer and click, 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 reach around the back of the printer. You have to reach around the back of the printer for some reason or other to turn it on. I don't know why. Around the back, click it on, OK. Paper in there, that's fine. Sip of the coffee, not taking my eyes off you. OK, word perfect, OK. That's coming up, OK. Hi. <laughs> and there they are, wank, like this, looking at me. And I imagine in the back of my brain looking at one of them, got him again. <laughs> now, what do they say? Are they there saying, is he looking? No, not yet. Wait till he goes for the coffee. Okay, now. No. I don't really know. I don't care much, to tell you the truth. But you know, proving these wonders, proving these wonders to be true, is not the way scientists should be going about it. They should be finding out whether or not they're true. They set out, as many scientists do, and you'll have to admit this yourself, pursuing something that you believe is probably there instead of looking at a situation and finding out what you believe is probably there really is there. It's a difference in attitude, but it is a difference between sometimes good science and bad science. Now, good old Virginia there, I have to, have to tell her, no, gee, I'm, I'm sorry. There isn't any Santa Claus. There isn't anything paranormal that I know of, and I've got a million dollars that I've put up for many years now for someone who can prove it. That doesn't mean it isn't. It just means they haven't come forth with the evidence yet. That's all that it has proven. And they say, well, you're not sure of yourself, are you, Mr. Andy? And I say, that's right. And no scientist is sure of himself either. Though I am not a scientist, I share that with them. They can be pretty sure, they can be almost 100% sure but there's always got to be that little bit of a doubt. I wonder if someone is going to improve upon what I discovered or change it slightly. But that's OK. That's in the rules. That's the way science is. It makes mistakes and learns from the errors. And I think that's the beauty of this thing that we call science. And most people out there find that very difficult to understand. Science doesn't really know anything. That's right. But we know an awful lot of stuff that we really believe way down deep. It's really true. And you prove to me that it isn't. And I'll have learned something. That's a great attitude, I think. No, Virginia, there's no magic. I'm sorry. I really wish, in some ways, that there were. But there is some, perhaps, in the fact that we can be wrong, that we can correct ourselves, and look them straight in the eye and say, yeah, I was wrong on that. Isn't that wonderful? I learned I was wrong, and now I'm a little smarter than I was just a couple of hours ago. That's the satisfaction, isn't it? I hope it is with you folks, because it certainly is with me. If we have a few moments, we will do questions and answers. But for now, I'd like to thank you very much for your kind attention and your most enthusiastic reception of my efforts. Thank you.